Ooh. There we go. I got it. Ooh. Ooh. I made it. Whew. I am so happy. Hello, friends. It is me, Miss Lori. Oh, I have missed you all. So, have you ever played the Flora's Hot Lava game? It's one of my favorites. See, by using the power of my incredible imagination, I pretend that the floor is hot lava and I can't touch it. So instead, I've been hopping around this whole church by stepping only on these pieces of paper so I don't burn my feet. Believe it or not, I have a surprise for you. Yes, really, watch this magic. I'm going to fold up a piece of this green paper and I'm gonna make it disappear right into your Life Kids kit. Yeah, go on, open it up, check it out. You're gonna use those later for the same thing that I did to play kind of like the floor is hot lava, so keep it handy. Any guess why they're green? No? It's because this week we learn about the story of Jesus entering into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey. Everyone came out and shouted and welcomed, and it was a huge party. They welcomed Jesus in a very particular way. They took off their cloaks or their jackets and they laid them right in front of Jesus, just like this. And they did this so that Jesus coming into town, they could honor him and worship him. And then they went a step further. Some climbed into the trees, found palm branches, just like this, tore and laid them down on the ground. And it was supposed to, this is supposed to remind you of the palm branches that Jesus walked over. The people called out to Jesus saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Now, that's a weird word. Have you ever heard anyone say that? I haven't. Let me pull out my Bible real quick. Oh, yeah. See right there in my Bible, it explains Hosanna is a word that means to save. When these people were shouting Hosanna, they were asking Jesus to save them. Uh, and you see, they thought Jesus was going to be king, the kind of king who would help them build their own nation and rule. But God's master plan was much more. God's plan was to save everyone, not just the Israelites. Wait, wait a second. Do you realize that? That means we're part of the plan. Now that is some good news. When God sent Jesus down to earth, he had a plan and he loved you that much. Okay, how about we play a game real quick? You're going to want to hold up your hands right now. Show me all 10 fingers, hold them there. What we're going to do is think how God uses us in his plans. And if I name a few things that are true, you're gonna put a finger down and we'll stop once everyone's fingers are all down. Are you ready? Okay, hold on, are you sure you're ready? Here we go. Put down a finger if you think God's plan for you might include animals. You don't know for sure, but maybe you really like your pets or animals at the zoo. Who knows? Maybe God's plan for your life is to help heal and protect animals. Is it to heal the sick? Is it about making art? Maybe his plan might require you to travel really far away like another country. Maybe it means taking care of your family. Maybe it might be very difficult for you to do or do something scary. It might be writing a book or a story. Or put down a finger if you have no idea what God's plan is at all right now. That's okay too. We won't always know what we're going to do in our lives. Here's what we're going to do. You and your family can keep playing this game at home. Go in a circle, keep saying things that you think might be a part of God's plan for you in your life. 
If anyone else agrees and thinks it might also be a part of their lives, then they can put down a finger. See, you keep playing until everyone has their fingers down. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go grab a drink of water and I will be right back. Ooh, I gotta hopscotch my way out of here. So let's be careful. was close. Whoo! Okay, we talked a lot about plans this month, didn't we? We make a lot of plans every day, but unless God is at the center of those plans, what's really the point? We've got to remember that God is the one who makes all plans like our memory verse says. If you know it, Let's say it with me, okay? It's Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So when we worship, let's think about the plans that God has planned and listen. I believe that God can speak to you and me and everyone else. And who knows what little whisper he might whisper into your ear about what he has for you. So you know how it's done. Let's get up on our feet and let's worship. Here we go.
right, kids, that was amazing to worship with you. And I am so thankful that we got to do that together today. So for this week, I want you to really take some time. Think about the plans that God might have for you in your life. And each day in the morning, I want to challenge you to pray with the Lord and tell him, Lord, today is your day. What will you have me do today to honor you? And with that, I can't wait to see you next week. It's been fun, and I can't wait to see what God's plans are for even me this week. Have a great week. Thank you.